I was in a class a few years ago, and a young woman was giving a report on the Soviet Union. And she kept referring to Leonid Brezhnev. Leonid Brezhnev. I thought, why is she mispronouncing his name? It occurred to me she'd probably never heard it because she was not born when the Cold War ended. These young people did not experience a world in which Europe and indeed the continent were divided by a wall. And a president stood up and said, tear down that wall. I was Secretary of State. I know what must have been happening in the halls of Foggy Bottom that day. How could he have said such an undiplomatic thing, they would have said. But he said it. And perhaps Gorbachev heard it. But more importantly, the people of East Germany, captive behind that wall, heard it. And they knew that they had a champion for freedom, their freedom, when they could not speak for themselves within the White House of the United States of America. Those young people would not remember the massed forces across the fold gap that America's military strength through the North Atlantic Treaty Organization was conferred on all who sat in the shadow of Joseph Stalin after World War II. They would not remember that those massed forces represented a real threat not just to the physical security of Europe, but to the values that were emerging on the right side of history's divide. They would not remember then that it was a president, Ronald Reagan, who said that those military forces had to be rebuilt because they were not just America's, they were the forces of the free world the shield of freedom. They would not remember the nuclear danger at the time. They would not remember that we had tried to control nuclear arsenals through arms control treaties that just accepted it as fact that Soviet and American forces would be somehow equal. They would build, we would build, they would build, we would build, and we would find strategic stability in that idea. No, Ronald Reagan said, this time there will be a class of nuclear weapons eliminated, but I will not eliminate mine unless you eliminate yours. And he would get in 1987 the Enemy Range Nuclear Forces Treaty that would do precisely that. And I remember, Peter, that people who were a part of those negotiations said to the great Paul Nitze, that Ronald Reagan said to the great Paul Nitze, tell the Russians what do they not understand about zero. <laughs> those young people would not remember that there was a time when the Soviet Union was astride not just Europe, but was pushing its power into Afghanistan, pushing its power into Latin America, pushing its power into Africa, through scores of proxy forces from places like Cuba and Angola. They would not remember that Ronald Reagan said, not in my hemisphere, 